What's up, Doombots? Tony Skunjui here with his first official roster review uh, for a player. Uh, and this is from Stream Local, Resident Bad Boy, and overall cool dude Tinok allowed me to show his roster as my first ever YouTube review for the community. So, Tinok, just to give you a quick shout out, thank you. And now it's time to take a quick look. So you are just under 2 million, and if you've watched my 2 million TCP review, uh, you'll know that uh, you are pretty much uh, on track to be successful. You have reached where the average player is at about 2 million TCP, and a quick look at the characters you've unlocked, both Thanos and Minerva, very high-impact characters, about 2 million, so great. You also have legendaries like Star Wars, Nick Fury, Magneto, Iron Man, well, eh, technically. You have Shuri and Invisible Woman, which is a little bit ahead of the curve, but since the team that unlocks both of them is relatively easy to come by, especially in the 1 to 2 million TCP range, it stands to reason. And if you look at the characters you don't have unlocked, it's the characters that uh, make the most sense. Mr. Sinister isn't farmable at the time of this video. Black Bolt, eh, well, you know. Uh, Phoenix, kind of a nightmare, and uh, Ultron is probably the target now. So a quick look at your roster, and I can easily say that you've uh, had the correct idea in investment. The only downside is, of course, the defenders. But, you know, they probably carried you up to this point, and now we can uh, evolve past them and never touch them again. Maybe a little bit of effort in regards to getting them... A decent star level but ultimately they can be replaced with a lot of other hero city characters uh, including brawlers or just city characters in general uh, depending on what event you need so maybe get some stars on them but i really wouldn't farm them up to seven star under any circumstances other than that right now it appears as though your priority is going to be ultron so a couple of quick points before we go into the blitz review your war at two million you probably are still not full of teams to use, so you do want to be a little bit more aggressive than than defensive. I wouldn't be putting your defenders on defense. I would be using high-powered mishmash characters to force people who have very similar rosters to you to waste their time 2020 and use your defenders to either counter an opposing defender's team or someone who does happen to have a good team. I'd rather you be aggressive and just at a quick look, it does appear as if you have about four or five pretty good war offense teams. Uh, and then the rest of the teams, including Fury Shield, I would put on defense uh, because they're just better on defense, obviously. But outside of having maybe those two, the Asgardians and Fury Shield teams on defense or the best approximations you can, uh, I would I would probably go a little bit more heavy on offense and just kind of use guys I have around the rest of the roster. Anyway, uh, that's my advice. If your alliance is doing something different, can't go in there. And then we're talking about Ultron. I think we've talked offline about this, but just to be clear, you have Star Wars, you have Minerva, you have Invisible Woman. So uh, if you bring those three characters up, you're not going to regret it. And then the other two characters can be I don't care anyone you want. It's very easy with those three characters to complete Dark Dimension. You can feel free to use Groot, or maybe you want to get cute and use Nick Fury, or Hela, or uh, I'm just looking at the rest of your roster. I wouldn't use Thanos, but you could. No problems there, especially with Invisible Woman. I just don't think Thanos has too much value going into future endgame content like U7 or Dark Dimension 3, so I wouldn't necessarily uh, advise there. Uh, but if you are going Hela, Thor might be a good option. I use Juggernaut just as a really fun off tank. You're welcome to do that. Uh, so there, there's a couple of good options, but truly, I would even go so far as to look at what you might be interested in doing for Dark Dimension 3 before you bring a character up to 13. Again, I am confident that Star Wars, Minerva, and Invisible Woman are are good enough as a base team that you don't have to worry too much about what you're going to be uh, investing in. But by all means, uh, feel free to stop by a stream and ask or just message me and I'll get more into you. So now let's go into Blitz. Uh, I'm not going to go over the details because these roster reviews are very simple. So quickly, S teams win an 8-3. There's no such thing as a standard S team, but there are some pretty reliable bets. 
Uh, A teams win in eight, not necessarily eight three reliably, but somewhere lower. Uh, B teams don't really do too well in the high multipliers, so you use them to f force your way up. And trash teams are trash. We don't talk about them. They use them to get you up in the opening rotation, then you progress on. So what I've been able to do with your team, and I've got you uh, four S teams, and their power is, is a little differing, but these are teams that are very reliable uh, at most TCPs uh, at 8-3. Obviously, the Brotherhood team is pretty reliable. These are not in any particular order, just so you know. Uh, these are just the order I place them in. When you place your teams, you should always place them e either strongest to weakest or weakest to strongest, however it makes sense to you. I like to go weakest to strongest, so I scroll down, but that's up to you. So Brotherhood team, probably going to be... You're probably already using it, so I'm not giving you anything you don't know. Uh, the Minervians, Ga Guardianerva... That team is absolutely adequate, and it's pretty well balanced. You can tell by the variation that uh, they're a very balanced team. Fury Shield, again, slow but reliable, especially when you don't have many S teams. Pretty good to have them. And then another auto fight team. Just click auto, grab a soda, you'll be fine. Uh, and I was able to come up with four of them. Uh, the rest of the teams, the teams I've marked as A teams, I, I'm not super confident in their ability to progress. Uh, in 8-3, but they will definitely win in 8, so test them out and let me know if you're having any success. I don't think the Defenders are an 8-3 team for anyone sane who hasn't put too many Tier 4s in them. If you are insane, by all means, show me a 400k Defenders team and have them win in 8-3, and I guess that's okay. But these are the teams that I've been able to throw together. Uh, this is also a, a cutesy one that will win an A3. And to confirm, I did test it. And my team is way more imbalanced than this one. And I fought a team that was way stronger than the matchups you're going to fight at 8-3. And I got one win with it. So I'm pretty confident you'll be able to get a win in 8-0, 8-1, and 8-2 with it. Let me know. I did mark it. You'll see right here. Nothing else really stands out. I did put Captain Marvel with your Ms. Marvel because she's a little weak. These characters aren't that strong, so they're going to need a little bit of extra power to push them through to guarantee a victory. The rest of your teams you'll see are kind of missing something. You know, I believe your Supernatural has Ghost Rider and Elsa very low on the totem pole. Your Symbiote Spider-Man, you know, this is a 2 million power roster and you don't have... Uh, too much investment which makes sense because that's what a two million power roster has so i did make you some temporary blitz teams uh in lieu of building a full team up i wouldn't worry too much but i will say now between two and three million once you unlock ultron and, and phoenix so those are the two kind of things you're focusing on now that's when you kind of shift into making war teams. So take a moment to look at the teams you need in war, whether you need a little bit of a defense boost or an offense boost, whether you could start working on teams like the Fantastic Four as a whole team. Uh, and as you bring them up, or AIM rather, uh, as you bring them up, they will be also become Blitz teams. So as a result of going from two to three million TCP, you will get stronger in war and of course stronger in Blitz. Uh, ultimately, these teams are balanced based on uh, power first and then making sure there's not too many healers or too many tanks on any team. They are B teams, so they don't have to be great, just good enough. And of course, they're just placeholders until you complete the meta team or the sure to win team to upgrade them to A or even S. Uh, and same thing with your trash teams. A lot of these characters are just low investment characters or incredibly imbalanced. Anyway, so these should be a little bit better but again they're trash you're not going to be using them after tier three and tier three fights are always negative multiplier fights so you're always going to be fighting a team in tier one two and three that is weaker than yours and you should have no problem uh, your opening rotation i i did have you spend charges early so if you check real quick you have four s teams six a teams eight b teams and six trash teams you're going to use one team all the way up to tier four uh once you enter tier five we're going to take a four, a three, a two, and a one. We're going to use them one extra time. Uh, it's going to be a total of 100 charges, which works because you don't have five S teams to truly pad your score, and it helps you get into eight faster. So you're kind of borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Is it the best use of charges? No. 
it is the most efficient use of charges based on time. Now, I'll get into this conversation with a lot of people. Tinock, I know you know this, but other people may be like, but Tony, you're using charges? Trust me, I've gotten this fight with people who are way smarter than me, and they all conceded that matter of efficiency, it makes more sense. It's just about efficiency. You're going to lose 2% or 3% of your total points, but you're not going to be spending an extra 45 minutes blitzing. You're going to get it all in in time. So you're going to use that 100 charges early. You see right here, I marked it. Then uh, out of the 370 total, remember, 500 for the day, you're going to not claim your 100 daily or your 270 medic supply run, hopefully. You're going to power yourself all the way up in your opening rotation to eight. Take your break, relax, stop by my stream, make fun of me, whatever makes you happy. Then you're going to start your eight rotation. You're going to use the top three teams, A3, A2, and A1, the top three A teams. Uh, then you're going to enter... 8-3, use all four of your S teams, not even mark them. You can use your top three teams three times and then use team four, the fourth strongest team, twice. That's going to be 275 charges. And that's going to put you exactly where you need to be for the day. You can claim your charges. Then you could feel free to intentionally lose a fight and clean up with those other two or three A teams. That's up to you. I just want you to get your charges, the things that are going to lose, you know, you're going to lose if you don't use them and go on. Same conversation goes for your daily rotation, 225 a day using the three strongest teams you have. If you would like to build power teams, you can, but I don't think the depth of roster matters until you have both Ultron and Phoenix. So that's something I tend to do for players who have about three to four million TCPs. I build the special teams to show these are the teams you want to use. Also, if we had more blitz slots, I would show you an idea, but we don't have enough and you are pretty much at capacity for this we're all about four or five teams over, so I don't want to kind of, you know, put too much in. Uh, the numbers as they line up are uh, not amazing, but they're not terrible. Again, you're about two million TCP, so we're going to try to get you as close to six million as possible because you're just under two million. So uh, your perfect rotation is 344,000 points. Your average rotation is about 320. Okay, you should be fine. And you can kind of keep track of how many points you're going to get on day one. And then every additional day, you're basically getting a free rotation if you follow the, the path I've, I've shown you with charges, uh, which can only help, right? So if your opening score is about 800,000, again, it'll probably be a little higher, but this is just in case things don't go too well. Maybe you miss a fight. Maybe uh, you can't win one match or RNG gets you. If you do three blitzes, you're going to push about... Four million, three and a half to four million, no problem. If you use the charges I've said, you're going to be about five million. The reason why, just so you know, is while you do have quite a bit of A teams and S teams, a grand total of, of 10, they're, they're in at the radar. You know, this team right here is in at 60K. You're only getting 17K per win, maybe anywhere from 15 to 17. So you're not getting too many points from them. Uh, the same thing with this Brawlers team. You're only getting between 20 and 22,000 points per win. So obviously, the more teams you have, the more points you'll get overall. But also, if these teams were a little bit stronger, you would get clearly more points. Like, look at the comparison. But then again, that's what comes up to you. Is it worth it for you to invest in this team to bring this team up to 150k so they have points that rival the Fury Shield, or is it worth it for you to take an entire new team up that will make you slightly equal points, another 100K team that will make you about 20K? That's up to you. I do recommend working on the teams that you need to unlock the next two characters because Ultron gives you one full S team and Phoenix also gives you basically one full S team, so I wouldn't worry too much. So you're a little bit below as far as the Blitz rotation goes. That's okay. Because if we have a goal, right, a goal of 6 million, it's going to take a little bit of effort to reach that. Uh, as we can see, it's going to be about 12, so about, let's say about four times a day until you kind of bring up the average number of points or add one additional uh, S team to your roster. That said, uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue to hit 3, 4, or 5 million which is usually good for top 10% on a blitz. The only exception to that is on a new character high impact blitz. Those tend to be right around here, the six to eight million points. You can stress for top one to 2% to get 
to get between six and eight million. And that'll get you hopefully some charges uh, on depending on the character. But ultimately, you can either choose to be a milestone and chill blitzer or try to get that top 10 percent, which uh, at least for the first rotation might make the difference between unlocking a character and being able to progress a little bit more or running out. It's also not bad when you're getting the extra mega orb shards, especially for a roster of about two million. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you for letting me show everyone your roster and, you know, the rules. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly or stop by my stream. I want you to have a good night and have a great day. Uh, I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch everybody later. Be good.